Now, what is some of this? This is cork flooring. Why would somebody want cork flooring? Well, each to their own. But I do know what it's great for. It's great for sanding blocks. In fact, bottom section here to make sure that this isn't gonna come through, the move out isn't gonna come through and damage your timber or scratch up your timber. So we put something softer on and we've got some of this nice cork flooring. It is six mil in thickness, which means it's an appropriate amount. So you've got your flooring, you've got your piece. Let's get these cut out so they match, match up together. Pretty simple, get your piece here, rest your piece on top of it. Remember, always work it to the edge. You don't ever wanna be just cutting things out in the center because you waste all this material on the outside and it's just such a waste. It kills me every time I see people do it. Now, I would normally mark this in pencil, but it doesn't show up on the camera. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna use a red pen. Remember, always mark everything in pencil unless for some reason you can't or it doesn't show up for you and you need a different system. If you are marking on darker timbers, a white pencil or white chalk can be a good alternative. As you can see, I've got this here like so. We've got a few different ways to cut it out. You could definitely go through and just knife it, cut it with an X-Acto knife. You could come through and get a tenon saw and cut it, or you can set up the scroll saw and have a good go, a good job on the scroll saw. So let's introduce the scroll saw to us and let's get cracking. Alrighty guys, this is a scroll saw. Now it is effectively a coping saw on steroids. No, what it is, is it is an electronic coping saw that goes up and down, allows you to do small, thinnish cuts. They don't love massive, thick cuts. It's definitely not a bandsaw. Even some bandsaws, depending on the setup, you've got to be very intentional. But it's going to move up and down, and it's going to allow us to cut out our nice little rectangle here with ease. So to set this up, you're obviously going to need to have safety glasses on. When you're setting this up... You want to make sure that the guard, which is just here, is just touching the timber. So you can still move it under, but there's no ability for it to lift up like it is there. So go through and adjust that guard. Come through and cut that. What you're gonna notice here is that it's very easy to cut curves and cut non-straight lines. So you do need to be very intentional about when cutting this. Make sure to go ahead and make this product oversized. It's very important that it is slightly oversized. Now, whilst you're there going ahead and doing some cuts, Make sure to go through and of course ensure that you're wearing both safety glasses, your long hair is tied up and any loose, loose clothing, bangles and or jewellery are taken off and removed. This will ensure that you don't have a degloving incident or any other incidences which may occur. It is time to glue our, ba our base to the cork. Just going to glue it like that. Now for that, you could use a variety of glues. I'm going to go through and use this Selly's PVA. Going to grab that Selly's PVA and we're going to set it up. Do a nice bit of a spread coming across. We don't want heaps of excess, but you want to have enough to cover it. After you've got a bit of a spread going, go ahead and literally spread it out. Like so. Now you're doing your best here to keep it off your hands, off the bench, off all the other tools that may be in the area, keeping it nice and tidy. Now, this cork is gonna soak up some of that glue. As you can see, it's coming through and it is filling in all those holes, which is gonna be great because when we attach it and clamp it, that's what it's gonna actually clamp to. From here, it's always wise, glue both sides. Now, you don't wanna have heaps of excess glue, but it is a nice sensation knowing that you've gone through and glued everything appropriately. As mentioned in previous videos, there are arguments over whether you should glue both pieces or not. And yes, the argument is, is if you do it properly, you shouldn't need to. But too often I see people not glue things correctly and have issues because of it. From here, we've got our two pieces. Bring them together. This time I'd glue it like this, put this on top and make sure that that's sitting where you want it. There's a little bit of overhang of cork on all sides. One of the issues you can often face when gluing this up, especially into a vise and not using clamps, is that it can go askew. This is of course overkill. But to fix this up, realign it where you want it to be and grab a bit of this masking tape. Jeez, it comes in handy. Just throw a couple of pieces over the gluing edges and it should hold it relatively in place so there's not gonna have too much movement for you. Like so and like so, like that and that. That way it's gonna keep it 
more regulated and more where you want it to be. From here, definitely go through and remove anything that might get in your way when you're clamping, but you are gonna have to leave this piece because you've got the nut sticking through. Come through, put it in your vise, do it up nice and tightly because of course that cork is going to compress a bit and then leave it to be. Come back in 40 minutes when it's had enough time to dry properly and then we can continue working on it.